Once I dreamed I was on a gorgeous ocean liner, all pale, gilded, cupid-encrusted, rococo as a wedding cake. There was smoke in the air, people were drinking and gambling, and I knew the ship was on fire, and we were sinking, slowly. They knew it too, but they were very gay, dancing and singing and kissing, a little delirious. There was no hope. I was terribly elated. I could photograph anything I wanted to. One of the things I felt I suffered from as a kid was I never felt adversity. I was confirmed in a sense of unreality, which I could only feel as unreality. And the sense of being immune was, ludicrous as it seems, a painful one. It was as if I didn't inherit my own kingdom for a long time. The world seemed to me to belong to the world. I could learn things, but they never seemed to be my own experience. Everyone has this thing where they need to look one way, but they come out looking another way, and that's what people observe. You see someone on the street, and essentially what you notice about them is the flaw. It's just extraordinary that we should have been given these peculiarities, and not content with what we were given, we create a whole other set. Nudist camps was a terrific subject for me. The first time I went was in 1963 when I stayed for a whole week, and that was really thrilling. It was the seediest camp. And for that reason, for some reason, it was also the most terrific. It was really falling apart. You think you're going to feel a little silly walking around with nothing on but your camera, but that part is really sort of fun. It just takes a minute, you learn how to do it, and then you're a nudist. You may think you're not, but you are. I remember one summer I worked a lot in Washington Square Park. It must have been about 1966. The park was divided. It had these walks, sort of like a sunburst, and there were these territories staked out. There were young hippie junkies down one row. There were lesbians down another. Really tough, amazingly hardcore lesbians and in the middle were winos. It was really remarkable. I found it very scary. I mean, I could become a nudist, I could become a million things, but I could never become that, whatever all those people were. There's a kind of power thing about the camera. I mean, everyone knows you've got some edge. You're carrying some slight magic which does something. It fixes them, in a way. Freaks was a thing I photographed a lot. It was one of the first things I photographed, and it had a terrific kind of excitement for me. I just used to adore them. I still do adore some of them. I don't quite mean they're my best friends, but they made me feel a mixture of shame and awe. Most people go through life dreading they'll have a traumatic experience. Freaks were born with their trauma. They've already passed their test in life. They're aristocrats. There's this person I photographed a lot. I just saw her on the street one day. I was riding my bicycle on 3rd Avenue and she was with a friend of hers. They were enormous, both of them, almost six feet tall and fat. I thought they were big lesbians. They went into a diner, and I followed them and asked if I could photograph them. They said yes tomorrow morning. Subsequently, they were apparently arrested, and they spent the night in jail being booked. So the next morning, I got to their house around 11, and they were just coming up the stairs after me. The first thing they said was, I think we should tell you. I don't know why they felt so obligated. We're men. I was very calm but I was really sort of pleased. The last time I saw her, I went to her birthday party. She called me up and said it was her birthday party and would I come, and I said, how terrific. It was a hotel on Broadway and 100th Street. I've never been in a place like that in my life. I've been in some pretty awful places, but the lobby was really like Hades. There were people lounging around with the whites of their eyes sort of purple, and their faces all somehow violety black. It was scary. The elevator was broken, and so finally, I decided to walk. It was the fourth floor, and there were these people dead on their feet on the stairs. 
you had to step over about three or four people every flight. And then I came into her room. The birthday party was me and her, a whore friend of hers and her pimp, and the cake. I do feel I have some slight corner on something about the quality of things. I mean, it's very subtle and a little embarrassing to me, but I really believe there are things which nobody would see unless I photographed them. Thank you. 